to Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. Here we explore the training and development of America's leaders in the application of air power and the profession of arms. The views expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the United States Air Force, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. The mention of companies by name is solely for the purpose of discussion and should not be implied as endorsement. Welcome back to another episode of Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. I'm Colin Slade. And I'm Reed Gann, and we're your hosts for Commission Ed. And happy two years to you, Reed. Unreal, right? 104 weeks, 104 episodes, two years. Yeah, can't believe it. It's actually 105, so let me blow your mind a little bit more. 105 episodes. This is episode 106. Man. When we set out to start a podcast, we first talked about this, what? April, May timeframe of 2019. Yeah. Did you have any idea that this was where we were going to be in two years? No, I'll be dead honest. I thought it was going to go a year, maybe a year, maybe. I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. So to be here at this point is incredibly rewarding. And honestly, it's because of you, the audience. If no one listened, if no one emailed us, if no one liked our posts and shared and we were getting, you know, three downloads a week, we would have stopped <laughs> like unquestioningly. I mean, we'll get into this here in a little bit, but we do get something out of the production of the podcast itself, right? We do. There is value there, but you're absolutely right. If there wasn't an audience that was willing to listen and give of their time and their attention and their feedback, honestly, then that would make it so much more difficult to keep going. And right, Reed, we had the conversation. Do we want to keep going for another year? Yeah. What do we want to do with this? And we felt that because of the audience, because of all of you who are listening right now, that it is worth it to us to continue producing this podcast for at least the next year. Yeah. And we are in that place is still just a little mind blowing. So to all of you out there, thank you, Colin. Thank you for dragging me kicking and screaming into this crazy experiment. I've benefited from it. I know we'll talk about that. Yeah, but I didn't have to drag you kicking and screaming into year two. You didn't. You didn't. I felt like we had good momentum and that wasn't as hard. So yeah, but yeah, the fact that we're here at all, I thought it was crazy at the beginning. And it, a little less so now, but it's been an interesting ride for sure. Well, different things are crazy, and we'll get into that. First, though, let's do a little recap. Let's talk about how the last year has gone. Obviously, COVID, right? COVID yeah. was a thing yeah. that blanketed the entire globe to include this podcast in our personal and professional lives. So acknowledging that up front... Reed, why don't you give us a little update on how your last year has gone? Yeah, so big news for me, I promoted. So I'm now a major in 04. Congratulations. Thank you. And, you know, you're talking about COVID. Even COVID impacted my promotion. I don't yeah. know if I've told this story. If I have, my apologies. But the guy who I had asked to promote me, really close friend of mine, been stationed together, we deployed together, and just really close friend. He really means a lot to me. And he was living and working at the Pentagon. And so it was close, you know, like, hey, perfect. This is a great guy. Yeah, because you're at Fort Meade, yeah, real close. Yeah, about by... a, yeah, an hour-ish away or so. It's perfect. He tested positive for COVID like three days before my promotion. <laughs> oh, no. And so I literally had him on my cell phone FaceTiming in on like a mic stand. So he was eye level with me and I could see him just fine. And yeah. everyone could hear him because I had a battery plugged into my phone. And then I had another extension cord. No, I had that Bluetooth to a speaker so everyone else could hear him. And then I had a mic that I was reading from. And then we were <laughs> live streaming it from another phone on Facebook because everybody, it was the most COVID promotion ever, right? right. Like my, my presiding. <laughs> it was outdoors. Yeah. My presiding officer is an hour away you know, in quarantine in his house. 
It was just the most COVID promotion ever, but really <laughs> memorable. And I'm looking forward to getting back to DC for his promotion to 05. Now, I won't be able to promote him, but I cannot wait to be there. So super exciting news for him. And then we moved. So yeah, PCS is always a big thing. It's funny, depending on what you're doing in life, you kind of mark time with these large, significant events. Right. In the military, you mark time in assignments. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe if you deploy a lot, you can mark time with deployment. So that was, you know, my fourth deployment or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty common experience for those of us in, you mark time with assignments. And so we've PCS, we're at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and I'm serving as a DO of an amazing squadron. And it has been just an amazing opportunity. This has been a really rewarding experience. I've only been in it a couple months. Absolutely loving it. Great, great people in the squadron. Great mission. And Ohio is kind of a nice place. Yeah, it is. And we'll mention this later. We have a lot of listeners in Ohio, so thank you. But yeah, I did not recognize how much I needed a step back from the hustle and bustle that is D.C. until I moved to somewhere that's a whole lot more chill. So you know, those are kind of the big rocks that have happened to us. But yeah, that's where I am. What about you, Colin? Yeah, it was a good year. I definitely want to say that because, you know, even with COVID and everything that it entailed, it was a good year. You know, in the vein of promotions, I was recently selected for major. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. It was a very underwhelming announcement for me in that I found out through a text from a friend who happened to look at the results before I did. So I never found out through the typical method of like the squadron commander calling me and saying, hey, congratulations, you've been selected for major. No, I found out through a text four days after the results had already posted. Oh, nice. But you know what? Yeah. I still got selected. So yeah. there we go. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So been selected for major. Super excited about that. I'm full up into, you know, traditional reservist mode with the 8th Swiss at Buckley Space Force Base. And yes, I did say Space Force Base because it was redesignated recently and I will be going to training to become a fully fledged space operations officer next year. So I'll be spending some time at Vandenberg. If any of you are going to be there with me, don't be shy. Come say hi. We'll have fun together. And then my last big update from the last year, we talked about this in some of the episodes that we did surrounding physical fitness, that I left my position as a customer success manager at Brainstorm to work full-time for Barbell Logic as a coach and as their director of external relations. It has been a fantastic ride. I'm really enjoying it. I do still miss being on active duty, but if I'm going to have to do it this way, this is the way that I would want to do it. Working for a great company, for people that I really enjoy, a mission that I care deeply about in helping people get healthy and strong physically and mentally, and being involved in the external side of the company where I get to focus on the growth and development and those strategic relationships that help the company to continue to thrive. So really enjoying what I'm doing, both for the Air Force Reserve, what I'm doing professionally. I have no complaints. Awesome. And we recognize that, you know, given this last COVID time, not many get to say that. And so I think you and I both feel very blessed and we're very grateful uh, for how things have gone. So that's where we are, you know, what's kind of occurred to get us here. Now is probably a good time, though, to review... Colin, some goals we set last year this time for yeah. the podcast. And we've talked about how to set goals before, and we're going to review our SMART goals. So these were, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And the first one is we set a goal that we were going to continue to release an episode a week for the next calendar year. Colin, how'd we do? We did it. We did. Exactly on the spot. We released one every single week. And... Huge thanks to 
Steven Sanchez for helping us to accomplish that. Yeah. And that leads right into the next goal. Some back end stuff, you know, that we, you know, it's boring to most of the audience, but to us, it was a big deal is to have other people involved in the creation and publishing of the podcast in order to make it more sustainable, easier for you and I with our busy schedules. And we also completed that bringing Steven on as our producer has really made things on our end a lot easier and better. We have a better product, which we're very grateful Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, I enjoyed doing the production of the audio. I like that part of it. But now having Steven on our team, I realize how bad I was at it. And so <laughs> I'm very happy to allow Steven to do what he is very, very good at. Yeah. Yeah. And it's certainly even if you enjoy doing it, there came a point of diminishing returns when it came to your time. For sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a little boring back end stuff, but it was a big deal to us. All right. So the next thing that we set out a goal to do is to post interviews from 90% of the possible officer career fields. And these are not, you know, commanders, astronauts, general officers, those categories didn't count. Right. And we're still working on this one. Yeah. <laughs> There are a lot of AFSCs, and some of these people are unicorns. Right. Like, we know they're out there. And, you know, to pop the jersey a little bit, we've gotten some of those. We've gotten some of those harder ones. Airfield operations comes to mind. But there are a lot. And yeah. we only know so many people. You know, we've definitely tapped out our, hey, I know a guy or I know a gal. Mm -hmm. And it's getting to be, you know, cold calling wing public affairs officers, you know, just trying to right. scrounge some of these up. So we are working on it. And on that note, if you see a gap and you know somebody, give us a yeah. call, you know, send us an email. We are listening. We would love to reach out to people who are interested in sharing. It makes it a whole lot easier, like I said, than just cold calling a PA officer from, you know, in a wing across the globe and Hey, do you have an officer in this AFSC that we could talk to? That's a really weird conversation to start is effective. I mean, we'll get into this a little bit later. Our most popular episode about Injet came from a cold call. And so it can work. But just like in any sort of sales and marketing environment, it's so much easier, so much, dare I say better? Does it yield a better product when you get that warm referral, right? That warm handoff and handshake saying, hey, I know a guy, I know someone that I think you should talk to. Maybe, maybe that is the better way to go. We're not going to give up on, you know, chasing down some of these other cats and dogs through wing public affairs and you know, the schoolhouses and stuff like that. But hey, if you have somebody that is good for the show, send them our way. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to roll that one into our smart goals for next year, but more to follow on our goals. Last smart goal we had, we wanted to do interviews with officers from four of the six DOD components and that included the Coast Guard to help us understand as Air Force officers, what we needed to know about their service. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't do that. <laughs> Sorry. We, it just fell off. Object failure. Yes. Like <laughs> Mission incomplete. Score zero. Yeah. I think at the time when we set this goal, Colin, we kind of to be fair, I don't know that we had a good direction of where we wanted things to go or where we thought they might go. I think it was still, we're going to fill the library of AFSCs. Yeah. We should better cover some joint stuff while we're at it. Yeah. And we were coming off fresh with an episode with Jello from the Fighter Pilot Podcast, you know, former Navy pilot. And so riding that high for sure. But I agree with you. We didn't plan that one well. We set the goal correctly in that it was smart. It was specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Like, we hit the smart thing, but then we failed to plan for it. Yeah. And th therein is a lesson, right? Yeah. Yeah. And again, the podcast went other places. We had an entire series of things that we had not even considered that I thought were really good, but it just yeah. didn't go to that joint place. Yeah. Accelerate, change, or lose definitely comes to mind there. Like, yeah. Hadn't fully anticipated how much time we were going to spend on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So those were our SMART goals. A couple, we crushed. Feeling pretty good about that. Others, we made progress, you know, and then others, we didn't. But hey, you know, <laughs> we're moving in the right direction. The vector is good. How's that? Yeah, I definitely think that we are moving in the right direction. And I think that our Everest goals will prove that out for us. We set an Everest goal to 
attain 100,000 downloads for the lifetime of the podcast. When we started year two, we were just over 40,000 downloads. And so doing 50% more than what we had the previous year was a big stretch. And, you know, the reality is, Reed, I don't know if you were watching it as closely as I was, but it was a real nail biter. Yeah, within a few hundred as we approached the anniversary. Yeah, but we made it. We got to 100,000 downloads just a few days ago. Which is humbling and shocking and awesome. It's a complicated, you know, the Pixar movie Inside Out, right? The complicated yeah. multicolor emotion ball. I use that analogy a lot. Yes, all of those things. What an incredible accomplishment. Can't thank our audience enough. The fact that at some point, 100,000 times, maybe even if it was an automated, you know, they subscribed once and it's just still downloading. Even that's <laughs> cool. You know, even that's cool. Yeah. However it was that we got there, you know, I can't say for certain that 95% of those downloads weren't from bots, but, you know, I still feel confident that there were at least some people out there who listened to the show, liked what they heard, and then felt impressed that they could click the button again and continue to consume the content that we had produced. And that's really why we set this goal in the first place is because we felt that if we were actually providing value, that recurring downloads were going to be a sign that what we had to share was, was worth listening to. Yeah, absolutely. So we got there. 100K. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Again, thank you, audience. You guys, you gals, you're the best. The next Everest goal that we set was for us to break even on the show. Now, I don't remember exactly what we said about this last year, but in order to produce a podcast, there's a lot of effort and time and money that goes into making this. And you know, we've set this up to where I'm the primary source of those funds, and I'm happy to do that, but it's not cheap. And if I could find a way to get the show to pay for itself, not interested in making money off of it, but to have it be self-sustaining, then that's where I was hoping to get to. And so I set the goal for us to break even. And let me tell you, Reed, oh, we failed. Yeah. Yeah. Like not even close by multiple orders of magnitude. And let me explain why that is. Number one, we hired Steven. And I'm so glad that we hired Steven. Steven's great. I have no issues with paying Steven for his expertise, but he's also not cheap. Right? Yeah. That's okay. I'm glad that Steven charges what he feels that he is worth. Right? Totally. And it's worth it. Yeah. But to put things into perspective, each episode that we produce costs somewhere around a hundred dollars. So if we produce 50 episodes in a year, you know, 52 episodes in a year for 52 weeks in a year, right? Yeah. Then we're talking $5,000 in a year to produce the show. And that's just for Steven's time. That doesn't include the hosting of the website or subscriptions for the different tools that we use to create the artwork and things like that. And so this is not to say that paying to produce something of value is not something that I'm happy to do. I am happy to do it. But again, in order to break even, that means that there has to be an income that is commensurate to what it takes to produce it around $5,000 a year or so. And what I had set out to do to try to break even was to offer some courses for sale. We put out some merchandise and there was almost no interest in it. And what that tells me is either we didn't have product market fit, meaning those of you who listen to this show were only interested in the information and not in the other things that we had to offer, the courses, the merchandise, and that's totally fine. If you don't want to spend money on those other things, that's your choice. Or we do have product market fit, but the audience doesn't know about it. And I think it's probably a combination of the two. Because, you know, the goal of the podcast is not to make money. And 
very rarely did we make any mention in our podcast episodes that there are t-shirts available for you to purchase or hey please go sign up for this course where you can dive deeper into the, some of the topics that we talk about we didn't do that and so it's nobody's fault except for my own that this goal was a complete failure and i'm just gonna leave it there <laughs> sounds good man all right <laughs> that'll wrap up like our goals section now we're gonna get into a little bit of the demographics and Colin, for you and I, this is super nerdy. We're really interested in this. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting. So we'll just dive into it. Okay, so who is listening? Our biggest demographic by far in age is the 25 to 34 year old. About 40% of our audience is in that age range, which yeah. just so happens, Colin, to fall almost slam dunk in the middle of the age of the average OTS attendee. Yeah. So, and we're going to see that prove out even further in more of the data. Yeah. Next most common is the 18 to 24 year group with 25%. So, which is the ROTC demographic. Exactly. Yep. And then the last group at about 17% is the 35 to 44. And that to me is kind of like the old graybeards in the military, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then it kind of drops off. So, I definitely think we're targeting, at least from an age perspective, we're targeting a military audience, military age people. Yep. And that also reveals itself in at least the declared gender of the audience. 75% men, 25% women. Colin, what's the ratio of men to women in the United States Air Force? That. That. Yeah, it's almost exactly that. <laughs> so to me, we are reaching a military-based audience in terms of age and gender, at least from an Air Force perspective, which is not too far off from our target audience being Air Force officers, right? The Air Force officer podcast, like that's kind of what we're aimed toward. So I found that incredibly fascinating. I'm like, oh, this looks like the age and gender breakdown of the United States Air Force. So I guess we're covering, you know, good chunk of folks. Yeah. And those good chunk of folks are literally everywhere. So our podcast is being downloaded in 92 different countries around the world. The top five, no surprise, number one is the United States, garnering 94% of all downloads. Again, the Air Force officer demographic primarily is in the United States, but they are elsewhere in the world to include Germany, United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada. Actually, those last two surprised me a little bit because we don't have a whole lot of Air Force officers in Australia and Canada. But those two round out the top five. So maybe something interesting is going on. Maybe we're reaching a broader audience with our Western allies. Or they're just large English speaking countries. I mean, that could be it too, you know, that's part of it. It is good to see some of our five I partners on there, though. That makes me happy. So yeah, because these are the folks that we go to war with, right? We're not going to do any of this by ourselves. So to see the, you know, our fellow allies on there makes me pretty happy. Yeah, absolutely. And this is fun. All 50 states and U.S. territories. And yes, I checked. <laughs> not many in some of the smaller ones, but we had people in all 50 states and all U.S. territories. Yeah. Top five states, Texas, California, Florida, Ohio, Georgia, with Texas claiming 10% of all downloads. Not too crazy when you think about the number of U.S. military installations there as well yeah. as the size of that country, of that state. <laughs> Freudian, Freudian slip, slip there. You saw what, yeah, <laughs> all my Texans are smiling inside. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and then according to the tracking systems we use, 4,020 cities. We had people in 4,020 cities with the top five cities being Columbus, Ohio, shout out to Ohio since I'm here now, Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, and Pensacola. And both Columbus and Atlanta each have 3% of all the total downloads. So quite, you know, sizable audiences in those locations. Yeah, which is interesting to me. Atlanta is a big metropolitan area. It doesn't really surprise me that you know, there's an Air Force base nearby. We've got Dobbins Air Reserve Base there. So we've got a big Air Force population in the Atlanta area. So not really a surprise there, but Columbus. Yeah, I'm wondering if that might be because of the large detachment at the Ohio State University. The Ohio State University. Are we right? Detachment out there at Ohio State University? Let us know. We'd love to hear yeah, from you. Absolutely. Claim 
those three percent of all downloads yeah maybe i'll go on the road all uh game day and set up a live session and talk to some cadets that would be a lot of fun <laughs> that would be incredible yeah the ohio state take him up on that yeah it's just a quick jaunt up the road from the tech side again colin this is interesting to you and i we're both kind of gadget people yeah 43 percent of all downloads came from apple podcasts and then Spotify at 20%. That's where most people are getting to our podcast. And 90% of all downloads are on a mobile platform, 72% iPhone. Yeah. Which, wow. Tells you that the Air Force officer demographic loves their phones, especially the iPhone. And more than likely, they're listening to this while they are commuting to and from the base yeah. or college. Or work if they're not yet in the Air Force, right? Yeah, certainly mobile in some form, right? Or while they're working out in the gym. Yeah. On their run or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, kind of nerdy stuff. We think it's interesting. But let's now talk about what they're listening to. Colin, let's turn it over to you for this. Yeah, so I alluded to this a little bit earlier that our most popular episode from the last year was the NJEPT episode, Euronado Joint Jet Pilot Training with Captain Kirk Saddle Morrow. Had a great conversation with him. If you didn't listen to that episode, which would shock me because it's the most popular one, go check it out because it was a great conversation about a fantastic institution and training program for our pilots. So that was definitely the most popular by far of all the episodes that we did in year two, quickly followed by the episode that we did about being a remotely piloted aircraft pilot with Major Mike Burns. Again, fantastic discussion, really enjoyed the conversation with Mike. Then the next most popular episode was the interview with Colonel Thaden, my previous boss about officer development and his look into what the Air Force is doing to professionally develop officers. And then number four, I'm actually a little surprised about this one, Reed and that our audience cared so much about what it means to be an intel officer. Maybe you can help me understand this a little bit. I mean, if you knew how cool we were, you know, (laughs) and weren't convinced that being a space officer was cooler. (laughs) No, I honestly think it's because Zane had such good info. Zane Shiv Stedman, coming from AFPC, he had such insight, and he was able to really peel back where and what you can do as an intel officer. And so... Yeah, I just thought it was a really good episode. And two, you know, you could think in great power competition, we're going to be entering Mm. another golden age of intelligence where if you think about the Cold War, it wasn't as much a shooting war as it was an intelligence war. And I really think we're heading for that again. And so I think there's an increased interest in it right now. Yeah. And putting it in that context makes sense as well why the Inject episode and the RPA episode would be so popular. I mean, they're going to be popular anyway because airplanes, right? Yeah, and and fighter pilots and, oh, the best of the fighter pilots. Yeah, that didn't surprise yeah. me at all. No, but I like that you're putting it into the context of near-peer competition. So maybe if you didn't listen to those episodes or if you want to go listen to them again, do so with that context in mind. And then our fifth most popular episode, I'm actually really proud of this one, is the discussion that we had about what we think that an officer should be. We spent our first year talking about what an officer is, and then we promised our audience in our first performance review one year ago that we wanted to get more into the theoretical, more of the thought leadership side of things, and this episode was the result. It's one of my favorite that we've ever produced, and so I'm really happy that the audience thought that this would be one that they wanted to listen to. Yeah, totally agree. And that leads us into kind of like our greatest hits of all time, you know, because we had all the material from the first year as well. And people tend to start at the beginning, right? It's no surprise that when they find our podcast, maybe they'll listen to a couple of the current ones, but then they'll go back. Yeah. So they'll go back to the very first ones. And so what are our most popular episodes? These should come as no surprise. But the first one, very, very first episode we ever published is our, you know, one of our number ones. What is an Air Force officer? And then there's a whole smattering of OTS episodes, 
which again we feel that that's definitely a target demographic that is partaking in this it's not a smattering read it's all of the ots episodes are definitely the most highly listened to episodes that we've ever produced yeah people in this audience want to know about ots yeah it's totally true promotion is up there high which again makes sense right if you want to stay in you got to get promoted but yeah those are kind of like our big hits and then anything that has flyers in it yeah like the next four or five are all flyers so yeah let's see air force airplanes pilots yep okay check makes sense <laughs> yeah no surprise about any of that and you know it's great i'm glad that we are reaching our target demographic in the way that they want to be reached that yeah. we're providing them the information that they came here looking for. Yeah, because Colin, we've said this before, we felt there was a gap. We felt that this was a good medium to deliver information. And I guess we weren't completely wrong, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... And even though some of our other episodes aren't directly aligned with aircraft or being a pilot, you know, being an officer is so much more than just those things. And so I'm glad to see that there was an increased interest in some of our other more leadership, officership type episodes, the ones that did not do well at all last year, such as the managing resources and improving the unit. Those got some more love over the last year. And so that I'm really excited about. And I hope that those who went back and listened to those episodes, again, found what they were looking for. Yeah, agreed. And real quick plug. I think I mentioned this recently. If I haven't, I'm going to do it here. I had to sit down with my new wing commander after I had moved into the unit, uh, mm -hmm. into the wing. And they sat me down and said, I'm going to rate you on four things. And I went, <laughs> I think I know what these are. Leading airmen, <laughs> accomplishing the mission, managing resources, and improving the unit. So in case anyone doubts that those things matter, that's just a recent plug. They matter. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of nice that I was like, yep, I know exactly what you're going to say, sir. Anyway, that was a good day. Yeah. Something that I found interesting is that our least popular episodes are these shorter ones that we do usually in and around holidays. Yeah. And they're definitely more thought pieces. They're very much more emotional, emotionally driven than informational. Yeah. And I like making them. You know, they're definitely the, I don't know. They're a little bit of a creative outlet. I'll give you that. Yeah. We think about them. We enjoy doing them. And honestly, we also do them in order to give you and I a little bit of a break around the holidays. Yep. They're not too hard to create, but y'all don't care. <laughs> you don't <laughs> like them. So we've taken that feedback, copy, understood. We will re-engage with how we behave around those time frames, <laughs> And we'll get to that when we start talking about our goals for next year. Yeah, that's right. Before we get to those goals, though, let's talk a little bit about what we've learned over the last year. And I think what we've just explored with the things that our audience are listening to, who is listening to it, where they are, I think it proves that there is an interest in the information that we have and consuming it in this format specifically. I mean, it's one thing to have a book on leadership it's a totally different experience to listen to people talk about leadership. That's one of the reasons why podcasts are so successful as a whole. Not every podcast is successful, but as a medium, podcasting is successful. And so I think we've demonstrated over the last year, definitely over the last two years, that there is an appetite for information about being an Air Force officer, specifically in the spoken format. What are your thoughts on that, Reed? Any? I agree. It's interesting. I, I wonder if we're filling, and, and I think we've discussed this before, but I wonder if we're filling a gap that's created by the changing times. I don't see the gathering at the O Club every night after a hard day's yeah. work that you hear people talk about or you read about in books. You know, you read a book, you know, I just finished it a couple months back, Bury Us Upside Down. It's about Vietnam pilots and they would go to the bar every day, yeah, every day. And it wasn't to get wasted. That was part of it. But a lot of it was to talk, to be yeah. together and to converse and to share information and to think. And, and I wonder if as society and culture changes, if it turns away from certain ways of 
associating with others if this is that new medium. That's something I've been thinking about. You know, I don't know. The newspaper, Colin, who gets a newspaper these days? Yeah. That used to be a way you'd get your news. I have an Amazon Echo read me a briefing every morning while I brush my teeth. Like, yeah. that's where I start. And then I listen to something on the way into work. So I just think it's kind of changing. And I'm hoping that we're staying with that change. Yeah, kind of goes back to what we were saying about the technology of how the show is being consumed, that our audience is listening to this while they're driving to work or working out on their phone, right? And you can't do that with a newspaper. Yeah. So it makes sense that this format is a great way to get the information that you're looking for. Yeah, totally agree. The only thing about that, though, and we'll get into this more later, is that it's one directional, right? Yes. That there's not an opportunity in the immediate for members of our audience to respond back to the information that we're providing. They do respond, and we're so grateful for all the emails, all of the direct messages that we have received, but it's delayed. Yeah. Yeah. So something there. Another thing that I've realized over the last year is that I'm pretty much at that point where I've shared about as much knowledge about the Air Force that I have gathered over the course of my career, and that I am definitely in learning mode at this point. With each new interview, with each new topic that we decide to create an episode around, I am learning. A perfect example of this is the episode that we did after the attack on the Capitol back in January, and all of the research that I did on the Constitution, the peaceful transition of power, the role of the military in that. You gave me a bunch of resources to read and listen to. And so I am definitely learning with the audience as we continue to create these episodes. It's not anymore for me like we had originally set out where I felt like I had something to give. I now create so that I can learn. Yeah, I am 100% there with you. Yeah. And that was a humbling transition when I realized, man, I, yeah, it definitely happened and I'm glad it did. And just like you said, Colin, mm -hmm. we continue to create because it forces you and I to prepare. Whenever we decide to do an episode, I have to like gear up mentally. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> I got to write all this stuff down. I got to go read the AFIs. I got to go call people. I got to, you know, there's stuff to do. Yeah. And, and then I have to think about it. I have to decide, you know, it's like when we did all of our physical fitness stuff, it's hard to design a physical fitness assessment system for the entire service. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so it's harder than I thought. Once we left the, I know stuff I'm sharing and moved into the, I have no idea what's going on. I'm here to learn. Mm -hmm. That transition was harder than I expected, but it's also valuable. I'm yeah. getting so much out of this. And for that, I'm grateful that the audience keeps validating that we have something to share because it gives me another opportunity to learn. So thank you. Yeah. That said, about this being a continual process of learning now, I also feel like we've settled in on like the primary theme and message of our podcast, which, yes, is about being an Air Force officer and all that that entails. But bigger picture, whether you're going to be an officer or not, I feel like we've settled in on the idea of being a good person defining your own success and focusing in on the things that you can control. Yeah. What do you think there, Reed? Am I off? Am I leaving some things out or am I being oversimplistic? No, I definitely think you're narrowing in. And maybe this is how, you know, your leadership philosophy is maturing throughout this process. I mean. Yeah, possible. Yeah, absolutely. And these are also messages that as I sit down, you know, to mentor younger officers or to give advice to people looking to apply for OTS or other things like that, these things keep coming up, certainly. So that theme is certainly there. I've got a couple things, you know, that I've been thinking about related to, you know, what I've gotten out of this. Mm -hmm. And certainly something that I've seen more in this last year than I can remember is a recognition that individual people and very small groups of people can have service-wide change. Yeah. I have started to really, really cement in my heart and in my mind that this is ours. This mm -hmm. service, 
what it is. It's not some amorphous potato in the sky that is just exists, right? It's made up of people and it's made up of us and we own this. This is ours. And if it's not right, we can fix it. And I think more in the last year than I can remember that has really crystallized for me and doing this podcast has helped me see that. Yeah, Reed, exactly right. Perfect example of that is the interview that we did with Captain Jack Liebert about the process that he went through in order to create the talent marketplace. It wasn't his primary job. It was something that he just developed because he saw a need. He had an idea and he went and, you know, on his own time, not as part of his primary duty, he built this algorithm that is revolutionizing the way that we retain talent, the way that we uh, market talent to different assignments and different commanders that need a capability. I think in another perfect example is Kevin Slaughter and James Nardelli with the ALQs, the Airman Leadership Qualities. Individual officers and airmen, but officers because that's the target demographic of our podcast, can absolutely have an immediate and direct impact on the way that the Air Force continues to evolve. Yeah. Jack Liepert wrote a paper, and now we have talent marketplace. Like, just, it was one dude. Now, I'm not saying a lot of people didn't work really hard to actually bring that into reality, but just think of that. One airman wrote a paper. Yeah. And yeah, so that's definitely something that's crystallized in my mind over the last year is just, this is ours, and we can affect change. The last thing, you know, I know this sounds like a motivational poster, (laughs) but what we do is worth it. And as broken as things are, you know, Colin, we run into things sometimes that we just want to pull our hair out and say, you know, we did this to ourselves. A captain in my office says circles around, you know, we'll we'll just keep going, you know, we'll just keep coming (laughs) back to do the same dumb things. But what we do matters. I had some experiences in the last year. You know, maybe someday I'll be able to share, but what we do is worth it and is worthy of my best efforts. Yeah. As rough as it was to watch the evacuation of Afghanistan, therein we got to see a perfect example of what we do mattering to the world. Yeah, absolutely. And not just to the world, but down to the individual person who was able to get out of Afghanistan. Because there was a C-17 crew there ready and capable to pick them up. Yep. Absolutely. So those are my big, you know, what I learned this last year. Uh, So many good lessons there. And again, thank you to our audience for providing the motivation for us to do this. For being there ready to receive the content and to respond to us about the information that we're putting out there. We would love to know what you have learned over the last year or two years, however long that you've been with this. We want to know how your development as officers is going. We want to know what haven't we touched on yet that you still feel like we need to. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that now about where we think the podcast is going to go in year three, because there is going to be a year three, right, Reed? Yes, absolutely. So we want you to be part of year three. So send us your ideas, send us your thoughts. What is it that you have learned? What is it that you still want to learn? And we'll see if we can work it into what's coming next. That's a good transition, Colin, to start talking about what next year is going to look like. It's going to be different, Reed, right? It is. And this is definitely on purpose. This is not because of anything that has happened to us within our professional careers or anything like that. But we are going to change the frequency of our episodes, how often we release. Instead of doing weekly, we're going to move to every other week. So no longer will you have an episode every single Wednesday to listen to. But, you know, there's 106 others that you can go listen to again if you really want to. And we would encourage that. But we are going to produce a new episode every other week. Yeah. And this was really brought on by some learning and growth column that you and I have gone through 
yeah. specifically referencing a really interesting work that gave me a lot to think about called A Minute to Think by Juliet Funt, where she talks about the importance of having white space, of having downtime to mm -hmm. actually progress. And in our increasingly connected world, where there is more content out there than any human could ever possibly consume, right? we are consuming all the time. We are always on. Even just think about a simple thing like sitting down to do the dishes or to make a meal or, you know, any other number of things like that. I've got, I've got AirPods in and I'm listening to something. Sometimes it's at like 2x speed so I can get through more. Right. And, you know, Colin, we won't for a second tell people to stop learning. That is not what we're saying. But we're saying you won't be able to learn if you don't give yourself some time to think about what you've already consumed. Yeah, absolutely. Every single one of us, no matter where you are in your development as an officer, whether you are one, you're in your commissioning program, or you're eyeing the exit from the Air Force, you need to take a strategic pause, take a minute to think about the things that you are learning, and let that incubate within you. In fact, that actually brings another great book that, Reed, you've mentioned multiple times and I recently took the time to listen to, and that's The Mission, The Men, and Me by Pete Blaber. And in that book, he talks about needing to saturate, incubate, and illuminate. And I think if you look at what we've done over the last two years, we've definitely saturated the amount of information about being an Air Force officer, over 100 episodes on the topic. And the next step then is to incubate. And so we think that year three needs to be a time for us to not stop learning. We're still going to put out information, but we need to incubate what we've learned a little bit more. Yeah, agreed. So that we can then illuminate ourselves and each other based on the things that we draw from all of that information that we've saturated and incubated ourselves in. Yeah. In order to help facilitate that, on the off weeks when we aren't publishing a podcast episode, we're going to be trying to get you to think about things that we've published in the past and what we've learned about those things. How have we put a principle into effect that week? And what have we learned from it? Did we gain some insight? And we want to also hear from you. So we're going to be asking a lot of questions. We're going to be throwing those out there, social media, email, Heritage Room, et cetera, trying to get us to engage with that white space and allow it to influence who we are and what we're doing and how we're approaching the world. Yeah. So look for those conversations to take place on our Facebook and Instagram feeds. We'll use email, potentially have a newsletter that's going to be going out, which you can sign up for and participate in the discussion inside the Heritage Room. And you know, here on the topic of the Heritage Room and you know, potential failures, like from the last year, I did not put as much effort into the heritage room as I could have. And so herein, I'm trying to do better at that by putting a lot more emphasis and effort into turning the heritage room into what it could and should be. Just like what you were saying about in various upside down, how the pilots after they flew a mission would come back and they would get together, yes, with alcohol, but mostly to converse. That's what I want the Heritage Room to be. I want that to be a place where you and I and members of this audience can come together to discuss the things that we have been learning as we've saturated, incubated, and now can illuminate each other. Yeah, absolutely. So also, Colin, we've been given some thought to what the content should be. You know, we're going to keep doing the you know, try to get more AFSCs. We already mentioned that before. You know, we still want to have that library on the shelf, so to speak, where we can go, oh, I, I have a podcast episode about that, you know, career field, that kind of thing. But the more we've been doing this, the more we realize officership is centered in and around this idea of command. And so yeah. we're going to do what we can to do more episodes about command. We've talked about it. You know, it keeps coming up. And that kernel that's really led us to this place trick. We're not commanders and we're not going to be for a while. 
and commanders are busy people. So this is an intent statement. We intend to talk more about command. We intend to get commanders. We tend to get people from multiple levels of command, but recognizing that it's going to be a little bit tough, but we feel like talking about command is something we really want to get to this year. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to what I was saying earlier about me feeling like I've shared as much as I know, and that I am in the process of learning as I create, this is the topic that I feel wholly unqualified to share anything on other than I know what a commander is, right? I honestly don't know that much about the process of becoming and being and what commanders do. Like this is something that I feel a great amount of trepidation around. And also the fact that I am still undecided about my desire to be a commander. Now I'm leaning toward that I do want to be one. And I have a feeling that as I learn more about being a commander, that that is really going to solidify for me one direction or the other. And so I'm really nervous, but also really excited about diving deeper into command from the Air Force perspective. Yeah. And so if you guys and gals have commanders that you think we should talk to, if you have preferably graduated commanders, because they might have a little bit more time than the ones that are actually, you know, doing the job at the moment, but, you know, we're listening. We've got some ideas, but again, these are busy people and they're commanders for a reason. So we're going to work on that. I'm definitely excited about that. Colin, what's another big announcement you've got? Ooh, this is a big one. I'm super excited about this. We are finally going to launch a YouTube channel, meaning like the audience is actually going to be able to see our faces as we talk to each other about being an Air Force officer. So how this came about, there was a guy near where I live who got in touch with me and offered for us to use his studio to create some videos. And Reed, you flew out and we took a day to record a lot of videos. <laughs> it was quite the day. Let, let me tell you, it's hard work looking this good, Colin. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. Yeah. But we put a lot of time and effort into creating some high quality videos, not long form videos like we do with the podcast, but shorter videos that people can get in, learn something, get out again, and feel confident that they could share it with their network to quickly answer questions that they have about being an Air Force officer, the different commissioning sources, the various career fields. And so we're super excited to bring those videos to you as soon as they are ready. Yes. So hopefully very soon. Yeah, excited about that one and nervous. It's nerve wracking even to put your voice out there. It's a whole lot more nerve wracking to, you know, all of this, you know, all yeah. of me, it's there. <laughs> It'll be good. All right. Like we said before, we're going to continue to try to get those interviews of the various AFSCs that we're still lacking, still working on it. If you've got good people that you know can fill in those gaps, we're listening. And then we're going to do a refresh of the website. And that'll include the Heritage Room and some available courses. Colin, these are definitely more in your lane. What do you want to share about these? Yeah, so this actually gets into some of our goals for the coming year. Let's start with our SMART goals, because that's where I see the website, the Heritage Room, and the courses really falling in line. My goal is to essentially rebrand the podcast in conjunction with the YouTube channel, the Heritage Room, the courses, trying to have a seamless experience across each of the different, I guess, products or services that we provide. And my goal is to have that completely done by the 1st of November of this year. And then along with that, you know, one of the primary means for doing that, we've already mentioned it, is to hold these discussions around the episodes that we release and the content that we put out there. And so another smart goal is to host a bi-weekly discussion topic on social media and in the Heritage Room and doing that in such a way that draws people in and they enjoy the experience because of the refresh with the website. Nice. And another smart goal that I have, slightly unrelated, but you'll see it there in as part of the website is refreshing our merchandise. So my goal is to make it 
absolutely easy for everybody to find the t-shirts that we're putting out there. And I'm setting a goal here. It might be an Everest goal. I don't know. We'll find out. I'd like to sell 100 shirts within the next year. You know, I figure if we've got 100,000 downloads, right, and we get 0.1% of that, that's 100. And so is that realistic? I don't know. Is it an Everest goal? I don't know. But I think it would be really cool to have some of our merchandise out there and for people to, you know, be wearing it when they take their selfies and put it up on social media and send it to us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm actually repping today, Colin. I'm wearing one of the, you know, very fall shirts, you know, the baseball tee. I absolutely love it. So yeah, one of the OG shirts that we ever designed. Yeah. That you will see on the YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. Nice plug. That was good. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm practicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my smart goals for this year, I do a, a social media post every week. And my day is Friday. Colin, you've got Monday, and then you also do when the episode comes out, you know, a little yeah. plug about the episode on Wednesdays. I'm not good at putting that earlier in my checklist for the week. I typically Friday after work, you know, I'm driving home. I'm like, oh, I've got a post today and I haven't thought it out. I haven't, you know, got that perfect pick for the gram. I haven't done those things that I need to <laughs> in order to really put in more time and energy into that. So my goal this year is I'm going to have my social media posts built and planned no later than Thursday of every week so that when it goes up on Friday, it's better. That's the bottom line. I need to do better. So that's one of my big smart goals for the year. Next, this one's a little bit different. It may feel very work related, but you know, kind of bear with me here. Something I have always wanted to do is to host a book club. I love to read and I love to sit down with smart people and talk about what I read. Yeah. And I feel very much that this podcast is related to that idea because I get to create content, but I have to do reading and I have to do research and I have to learn in order to have this discussion, right? We just don't sit down and off the cuff, just have these conversations. There's effort that goes into it, but then there's a really good result that comes from that. I think that's yeah. not too dissimilar from a book club where you prepare by reading a book and then you think of some ideas that you would like to discuss, and then you sit down with smart people and you have discussion. So what I want to do is at work, I want to form some sort of professional development thing, whether that's a book club, whether that's where you know we consume other media, say it's a TED Talk, say it's a podcast, you know, either ours or from somebody else, in some form or fashion, consume some material and then sit down and talk about it. And I want to form this thing and have five sessions with a group by this time next year. And I really think that it will help the podcast because I can, you know, maybe do like a soft start. Hey, this is something I'm thinking about doing for a podcast episode. Put it in that form first, see how it goes, maybe yeah. get some material that we can bring back to make our podcast better. But also I can bring things that you and I do to that form. So I feel like they're mutually beneficial. One is, you know, definitely supporting the other. So those are yeah. my smart goals for this year. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what you come up with, what the actual format of that book club, you know, OPD session ends up looking like. Yeah. I wish I were in Ohio so that I could attend. Yeah. Well, you're more than welcome. It's only a 25 hour drive, but you're welcome <laughs> to join. Well, maybe those cadets from the Ohio State might be able to benefit. Yeah, that would be tons of fun. No kidding. If there's a ROTC debt that, you know, wants to sit down and go over a book chapter, that sounds like tons of fun. Awesome. All right, Reed, let's wrap this up with a couple of Everest goals. Just as a reminder for the audience, Everest goals are things that feel unattainable, that they're going to be a big stretch to get there. But if you get there, man, would that just be awesome. And I'm going to share mine first. My Everest goal is to have the chief of staff of the Air Force, General Brown. I know you're listening, sir. I invite you to come on the show and teach us what it means to be an officer from your perspective. There it is. The invitation is out there. I want to interview the chief of staff for the show. Boom. That would be something. 
It would be. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I will add a little piece to Everest goals. Sometimes even the journey of striving for the Everest goal, you'll reach someplace farther than you would have had you not had that great shot. So maybe you end up with, you know, a three star, which still is good. That would be impressive. (laughs) But yeah, shoot for the top. Why not, right? Why not? Why not? All right. So mine is super selfish. I'll admit. (laughs) Because interviewing the chief of staff is not selfish at all. I mean, okay, fair. That's fair. (laughs) (laughs) There is a web cartoonist out there who is active on Twitter, active on Facebook, does a lot of professional writing, and I absolutely love this guy's stuff. It's Doctrine Man. If you haven't read or seen anything by Doctrine Man, do yourself a favor, get your favorite beverage and sit down and just spend like 30 minutes enjoying. It's almost dark humor, right? It's It's like reading the far side. Yes. It's like, man, it hurts so much, but it's so true. You know, those types of things. I would like to get, you know, either a cross post, a share, a like, a mention, something. (laughs) <laughs> even if he ends up mocking us, I would even take that. <laughs> but I would love if Dr. Man, if you're out there, sir, I would love, you know, for you to do a professional writing and just, you know, hey, there's, you know, these Yahoo's doing this podcast. They're doing a good job. Even that would be amazing. So that's my stretch goal. All right. Get a little bit more famous, I suppose. Reed, let's go get these Everest goals. Let's go get the chief of staff. Let's get Dr. Man. Let's get them in the same room at the same time. Oh, man. I don't know. Like some <laughs> some critical mass would occur and, you know, excellence would explode from the Pentagon. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. It could happen. It could happen. I'm not saying it won't. I'm not saying it won't. You know, though, on a more serious note, just one more time, want to say thank you to you, our listeners, our audience. You make this worth it. We're so grateful that you are on this journey with us. And here's to another year. Yeah, let's go get it. Year three, here we come. All right. Thanks for joining us this week. That'll do it for this week's episode of Commission Ed. Commission Ed.